Hello students, let's have some fun learning about understanding laws. You may be familiar with some laws such as those that specific the age of marriage, the age for voting, etc. And now what you will learn in this chapter, you will learn in this chapter about the, the body who makes the law that is parliament and do these law which made by the parliaments apply to everyone? How do new laws come into being? If we talk about Indian democracy, in Indian democracy, the parliament is in charge of making laws. According to the constitution, all are equal before law. No one discriminate on the basis of their color, caste, gender, place of birth. The rule of law applies equally to all citizens and no one can be above the law, neither a government servant nor even the president of the country. Any crime or violation of law is subject to specific punishment. We can understand this concept by this example. The example, a government official has his son go into hiding because his son has been given a 10 year jail sentence by a district court for a crime that he has committed. Do you think that the government official actions were right? Should his son be exempt for the, from the law just because his father is economically and political powerful? Answer is no. Because according to our Indian constitution, no one can be above the law. So any crime or violation of law is subject to specific punishment. What is the rule of law? In ancient time, there were so many laws. The British government introduced the rule of law. This law was arbitrary. In Indian citizens can express their unwillingness by holding meetings or writing in newspapers to accept repressive laws. Rolic Act. The Rolic Act was passed by the British government to increase the gri their grip on power over the common folk. This law was passed in March 1919 by the Imperial Legislative Council, which gave them the power to arrest any person without any trial. When the British Arbitrariness was the role it act which follow allowed the British government to imprison people without due trial. Indian nationalists, including Mahatma Gandhi, were vehement in their opposition to Rolex Bill. Despite the large number of protests, the Rolex Act came into effect on 10th March 1919. In Punjab, protests against this act continued quite actively and on appeal, then to leader of the movement, Dr. Satyapal and Dr. Saifuddin Hitch was arrested. To protest this, these arrests, a public meeting was held on 13th April at Jallianwala Bag in Ambesa. Janadar entered the park with his troop. They closed the only exit and without giving any warning, Jana Daya ordered the troop to fire. Several hundred of people died in the gunfire and many more were wounded, including women and children. This picture shows two fire on the people during the Jallianwala fire. The Sedition Act of 1870. In ancient India, law did not apply equally to all. Even the punishment that two persons receive from the same crime were depending on their caste backgrounds and lower caste being more ruthlessly penalized. We are talking about scheduled caste. Even the colonial government failed to establish the rule of law in India. 
the colonial law was arbitrary. The Sedition Act of 1870 was the one of the examples of colonial law arbitrary. Present the best example of the arbitrariness of British law. Under this act, any person protesting or criticizing British government could be arrested without due trial. Indian nationalists raised voice against the arbitrary use to authority by the British. They began fighting for greater quality and wanted to change the idea of law from a set of rules that they were forced to obey to law as including idea of justice. By the end of the 19th century, the Indian legal profession also began emerging and demanding respect in colonial rule. In this way, the Indian judges played a great role in making decisions. Their effort did not go in vain. The rule of law emerged during the colonial period. I hope you have enjoyed my video. Thank you.